Vulnerabilities to Consider in Working with Children with Disabilities. This is a response from Michael Crocker as a result of an interview in the winter of 2005 related to the issues of child abuse and children with disabilities that he considered most important to remember. Michael has been involved in working with children, adolescents, and adults with disabilities for more than 25 years in many organizations. He was one of the first directors of the Lexington Center's Child Abuse and Disabilities Project and helped design many of the training modules used to educate child protective workers and law enforcement professionals in New York State and across the country. He is a trained psychotherapist and licensed clinical social worker with specialties in disabilities, trauma and sexuality related disorders, providing both individual and group work as well as organizational training. Statistics clearly indicate that individuals with disabilities are at a higher risk for abuse. The question is why? I believe there are numerous vulnerabilities to consider. These vulnerabilities relate to a number of core issues. In order to understand the issues, abuse and disability needs to be looked at ecologically, meaning that we need to look at the context, the whole picture, society, organizations, families, and individuals. In other words, we need to look at the phenomena of abuse and disability by looking at the larger societal level issues as well as the more systemic issues. Systemic, meaning the organizations involved in the lives of people with disability. On the social level, we look at the issue of stigma. From a social perspective, disability creates a sense of differentness. The power of stigmatization and the devaluing of a group of citizens have severe ramifications in the multiple systems that are involved in the lives of these individuals. For example, schools have historically utilized segregating mechanisms to keep the stigmatized together and away from the, quote, normals of society. This segregation has resulted in years of institutionalization and less than human living conditions for thousands of individuals with disabilities. Each state has examples of these atrocities, including New York State's Willowbrook. Additionally, we have seen that systems designed to protect individuals from abuse are at extreme disadvantage in dealing with individuals with disabilities. Dick Sopsy from Canada reported that only 2% of sexual abuse cases that involve children with disabilities result in successful prosecution. Only 2%. According to demographic data compiled at our New York-based agency, the Abuse and Disabilities Network, 48% of New York City child, child protective personnel never met an individual with a disability. For many of the child protective workers, their very first exposure to a child with a disability is when they encounter such a child in the case that they are investigating. Without prior exposure and training in this area, the child protective worker is left unprepared to handle such cases often unaware of potential challenges in communication and assessment of abuse. Another system that is equally unprepared to address these issues are the professionals working with individuals with disabilities. These professionals often do not receive proper training in abuse identification and reporting. Without proper training, these professionals run the risk of interpreting indicators of abuse to be the behaviors related to disability. This leaves individuals with disabilities falling through the cracks in both the disability system and the protection system. Children are most at risk with those that are responsible to care for them, whether that is their parents, siblings, family care providers, or residential counselors. Due to the fact that a child with a disability creates a potential long-term challenge of care, not only is there an increase in the risk of abuse, but there is also an increase in the duration of that abuse. Children who are being abused can attempt to escape the situation when they become more mobile and independent. This defense is not always accessible to the older child or the young adult with a disability. What we have is an increase in the interpersonal dependency for the individual with a disability. The question is why are we seeing so much intrafamilial abuse dynamics? What we see is that there are a number of risk factors of intrafamilial abuse. These risk factors include blurred boundaries, role reversal, isolation, lack of privacy, the mishandling of power, denial, secrecy, lack of assertiveness, and a low family esteem. As you can imagine, many of these issues are already present in the family when there is a child with a disability. 
Denial, subsequent secrecy, and potential isolation of a family as a result of disability have been well documented. Additionally, the caretaking responsibilities of siblings often create a power differential and confusion about their role and respective boundaries. This confusion can often result in the suppression of individual needs of the non-disabled sibling, leaving them with a sense of emotional isolation and unwillingness to assert their concerns considering the already existing familial stress. This can often lead to resentment without an appropriate outlet in which to deal with these feelings. When framed in this manner, the dynamics that can exist in a family system with a child with a disability can also point to the risk factors of abuse. Another factor related to the abuse of individuals with disability is the fact that many schools and rehabilitation programs may be increasing an individual's vulnerability to abuse by constantly rewarding compliance and not providing training in the area of sexuality and self-protection. The enhancing of compliant results in a prime victim for the grooming of sexual abuse. Not educating individuals in sexuality and self-protection leaves individuals unarmed without necessary knowledge of healthy sexuality, appropriate boundaries, and strategies to use when in danger. These systemic issues create four distinct problems. One, the child and, adu and adults with disabilities are left more vulnerable to abuse due to the living situations we have created and the lack of training. Two, that family systems with a child with a disability may be at increased risk due to the stressors inherent in caring for a child with a disability. Three, the children and adults with disabilities who are being abused can go undetected in their cases unreported. And four, that when such cases are reported, they are usually not handled properly and end up being poorly investigated, resulting in individuals not being protected and being exposed to perpetual abuse. Abuse and disability is not a linear issue. It is a complicated picture that must include addressing all the variables that contribute to the issue. Attempts at addressing this issue must be ecological in order to be effective. Prevention must include efforts at minimizing the effects of stigma. There needs to be continued efforts at sensitizing protective professionals to individuals with disabilities, as well as sensitizing disability professionals to the issues of abuse identification and reporting. This should include mandated training for all professionals. Family systems with a child with a disability need support and resources to help break isolation and increase family esteem and respect. All individuals need to learn about healthy sexual boundaries and self-protection in order to help them identify when they are being mistreated and what to do when this happens. Prevention must address every aspect of the ecological model. There are many places where to begin, but it can only begin if action is taken. So the bottom line is as follows. When faced with a child with a disability, there is more than meets the eye. In this moment, you are, fa you are also facing the impact of stigma, the years of discrimination, the unprepared systems he or she has already experienced, and the overwhelmed family system he or she has come from. Keep your perspective of the child multidimensional, as multidimensional as he or she truly is. You have an opportunity to make a difference.